Hello and welcome back to another day in the arena. It's me, it's CGB, bringing you the most toxic and horrible combo deck since Paradox Engine. The one that when you see on ladder is going to make your eye just roll to the back of your head. It is so frustrating. It is a two card win the game combo and one of the cards is your commander, which means all you have to do is have this one other card and resolve your commander and without disruption from the opponent, you win the game. The problem with the combo takes forever very very difficult it is you versus rope and um i mean man the opponent <laughs> we'll see you really test their stamina with this particular deck the combo starts with the commander croxa and kunros this you already know this combo by the way if you watch my covert go to video on the top 10 historic brawl commanders for the set many of you didn't because that video didn't get many views but you probably should go to covert go to and look up top 10 commanders from mom for historic brawl it was a video i really liked doing not many people watched it but this was my number one commander for the set because of the combo okay now i've set it all up those of you who don't know what i'm talking about crox and kunros and altar of dementia mills your whole deck and creates endless well, not endless, but all, it will deterministically eventually create endless enter the battlefield triggers and leaves the battlefield and dies triggers for creatures. Sorry, mic punch, too excited. So how does it work? Crocs and Kunros has a trigger that's weird. It's a delayed trigger. Whenever it enters the battlefield, you can exile the top five cards from your... You may exile five cards, rather, from your graveyard. When you do, you return a creature from your graveyard to the battlefield. Because there's a period, and because there's that condition of exiling five cards, there's a little pause while the trigger is on the stack, but Crox and Kunros are also on the battlefield. If you were to say hold full control and sacrifice Crox and Kunros to do something that puts, say, six cards in your graveyard, then Altar of Dementia, which does exactly that, uh, then what you can do is exile five cards that you just milled and bring back Croxa and Kunros because you sacked it to the altar. So it was in the graveyard when this trigger resolved. Most triggers don't work that way. They require targets when it goes on the stack. This is a special case. So there it is. The combo is Altar of Dementia Croxa Kunros. Using full control, this combo and careful clicking, you can mill your entire library. Why is that good in the color combination Mardu? We don't have Thassa's Oracle after all. Well, we do have an end game. The end game is this. Uh, again, I talked about this at length in another video on the Covert Go To channel that you really should go watch if you're interested. But the way that it works is with the last Crocs and Kunaros trigger, or at least the trigger when we start the combo, once we have Hero of Dunes and Fiend Hunter in our graveyard, we get back Hero of Dunes. Hero of Dunes returns a creature with mana value three or less from graveyard to battlefield. We get back Fiend Hunter. Fiend Hunter targets Hero of Dunes, exiles it, puts it under the Fiend Hunter. Fiend Hunter is like Banishing Priest and like Brutal Cathar and all these other cards with the one really nasty kind of problematic exception that you can exile your own creatures. And also it has that wording that, you know, when it leaves the battlefield, the exiled creature comes back. So now, we still have our altar we sacrifice the fiend hunter we mill our opponent for one then we get back hero of the dunes because it was under the fiend hunter which gets back the fiend hunter which exiles the hero of the dunes which then we sacrifice to altar to mill our opponent for one Re repeat this 85 to 90 times and you win the game good job you're cool um realistically the timer doesn't allow this you will deck out so you need a way to benefit from the enters the battlefield leaves the battlefield and dies triggers that can win the game uh one of my favorites is meat hook massacre if this enchantment that is kind of good in the deck anyway is on the field you create death triggers and you only have to do this like 25 times or whatever the opponent's life total is just doing this 25 times sounds insane but this is where the combo gets really toxic for those of you still with me this can all happen at instant speed, at instant speed. It's very hard to disrupt. This means that the right course of action in this combo is to pass the turn to the opponent when you're almost out of timeouts, but set stops on their untap and draw step and every phase and inside every single phase, keep doing this and then pass right before your timer runs out and then keep doing this at every single phase until it is over. God, that's horrible. So I have built the deck in such a way that it can do other things to win. The biggest thing to remember is that you don't have to completely mill out win the game in most situations this way. 
you are milling your whole deck. And one thing that you can do as you are flipping your deck over to both give you some quality of life and spare your opponents this absolute hell. I know, who am I? Uh, who is CGV? If your opponent is at 16 life or less, you can use your last Crocs and Kunros trigger to bring out Olivia Crimson Bride. Olivia Crimson Bride can reanimate Emrakul the Promised End and you swing in the air for 16 with haste. There, they're dead. Now, if they have more life than that, and you can't get them completely that way, something that is almost as good as winning the game is to reanimate Olivia Crimson Bride, attack your opponent, have Olivia bring out Grizzlebrand. You hit your opponent, you gain seven life, they take 10 in the air, and you can pay seven life at whenever you want and draw seven cards. That level of value and card draw is usually good enough to win you the game. It is also worth noting that once you have like these cards in your graveyard, it might be wise not to completely mill yourself out. Again, these are like quality of life plays that still set you up to win the game with the combo without doing the full combo. And it's worth knowing uh, and getting used to playing this deck so that you know when you have to do the combo. Like if your opponent untaps, are they going to take infinite turns? Do they have Paradox Engine? Then maybe you need to do the combo. Or like if they're Ragavan, and you've mostly shut their game down and they don't have like a fiery emancipation on the field, hitting them with Grizzlebrand is usually enough. They're probably not going to remove Grizzlebrand and they're probably going to die. So things to think about as you play this deck. It's very hard to play. The deck is mostly built up of ramp to make the uh, combo happen faster, ways to fill your graveyard with looting type effects, like thrilling discovery, rummage type effects, thrill of possibility, tormenting voice. You wanna be able to discard these big creatures and these combo pieces when you need to, to have them in the graveyard for when you go off. And uh, there's also a lot of disruption and a little bit of removal. So a lot of uh, make the opponent discard stuff, a lot of look at their hand and mess with stuff, uh, things like Peacekeeper and Spellbinder, and then a lot of, you know, go for the throat, Infernal Grasp, Edict, stuff like that to keep them from killing you before you combo. This deck is fun, but it is a challenge. I will tell you straight up, I don't expect everything in this video to be played perfectly. This is a hard deck to master. If you like a challenge, you will like this deck. I have not done a seven minute intro for a deck in a long time. I felt like this one warranted it because it is a weird, bizarre combo deck, but it is a really cool addition to Historic Brawl. And for those of you who love this type of deck, you're going to love this kind of deck. So let's let's commence the combo loving. Let's dive in. Let the nonsense begin. Mardu on Mardu, Jan Jensen is the opponent. Interesting little tinkerer combo deck. Not my style, but I'm always kind of amazed that they can do more than I expect. We'll keep this. We need to find a red source. Wow. What a play. I'll, I'll, I'll offer you an attack. No? Okay. Uh, scry or draw, they get a draw with an altar. Scry. Sure. Potential combo win con. Fire weaver, that's gross. Must be another tap plan though. Awakening. So whenever an artifact enters the battlefield, one damage each opponent, that adds up a lot in the deck. Uh, get down the altar though. Do they have an answer for it? We will find out. Most dangerous card in the deck, and then you back it up with a brush stroke and you're just threatening to end the game. Opponent with the Tokasia's welcome, they will pay. I don't know if they know what the clock that we're on. I have a combo win coming up. What do they have? That is a tapped land, but it might be an untapped land if we wait. Let's go for the brush stroke. I mean, this is just close to being straight up death. All it takes is getting the commander into play with this setup. Elish Norn. Uh, this is life loss, right? So it doesn't trigger Elish Norn. So this is fine. Price of fame. Pretty good. 
can target Elishnorn too and surveil and try to hit land. <clears throat> we could also use the blood token. Let's price of fame first, pay the one, use the blood token, maybe hit a tapped land. No, no, deck, land. Do not stop me when I'm so close. Holding up swords doesn't do a ton. Let's try to hit a tapped land or a land that lets this enter untapped. Okay, that works. So we played this one. So that can be untapped next turn, potentially game if they tap out. Of course, the hero's in the hand, that's a problem. Could discard it with a blood token. But it's good to have backup in case they do something about the altar. Would really love to draw Thoughtseize. Thrilling Discovery. So if we play Crocs and Kunros, how do we get this in the graveyard? Does it matter? We How many drains do we actually get from just looping? And does it end with winning the game? Of course, they have open mana. They can sacrifice an artifact to create two treasures. That's very frustrating. Um, we should probably just go after that. So yeah, let's take our time. The thrilling discovery though, don't want to discard the swords. This will probably get some kind of response. Maybe they'll sack this sentinel that we've paid for the whole time. They sack the land. I guess that's fine. To make some one ones, okay. Hopefully that will lead them to casting their commander again. It was also their only red source that we can see. Let's discard these. Now they get rid of altar, right? Okay. Another card to think about is Mana Tithe. So, there's plenty going on here. They're going to bobble me? <laughs> Down to 21. Blade Splicer. Oh, well, they're tapping out, maybe. Okay, it's not an untapped white. What for one black or one red could stop us? My turn. Thoughtseize, what a beautiful card. What you got over there? I'll let you draw. Okay, the only thing that's gonna hold priority here is this, so we'll take it. And if I know how to end the game, this is going to be our chance. Hold me, I haven't done this combo before and I'm scared. All right, gotta be on full control. Trigger on the stack. Gotta sacrifice this. Decline for the command zone. Drain with the blood artist. Mill six. Resolve trigger. I mean, I guess you keep the creatures because maybe, but I'm probably over just just overthinking it anyway. And then target itself. This is the thing coming back, right? Target itself. Until we get the Fiend Hunter. And then with that trigger on the stack, sack. Okay. 
I will get faster, but I mean, if you misclick, you lose. So yeah, you got to decline the command zone because it has to be in the graveyard. And then you have to not exile it here. And then you have to choose it, even though it's poking up and that's not usually what you do in those spots. And then with this on the stack, you sacrifice again. And you decline. And for some reason, that's the part that gets me. Uh, so I think you can also exile all the other creatures in the yard if you want the Croxal Loop to go faster. I'm too afraid right now. So forgive me. Oh, also we have the hero in the yard, which is an important piece of the combo. So no can do, but I'm getting used to it. It's coming. You should sack that bobble, opponent. It's gonna make you click a lot. It's not healthy. But anyway, I've demonstrated a loop, and in paper magic, I could just say I win now. And uh, and you'd be like, judge, and judge would be, yes, you. they win now. And you'd be like, ah! Victory. I guess it's not... The loop isn't here yet, right? It ends with my library. Ah, there you go. Good job. Good job. Yeah, the loop isn't yet. We have to find the Fiend Hunter. When we find the Fiend Hunter, then it's the loop loop. Don't distract me. Go, baby, go! How does one entertain under these conditions? Two X speed. Yes, that's right. I will speak in the two X speed voice. So while on two X speed, you can understand what I am saying. Opponent's like, I don't know if you can beat the arena timer. I know. Isn't that isn't that just the fun of the whole thing, right? And like I said, it's not an the, the loop ends right now. If I get to the bottom of my graveyard, but they don't know about the fiend hunter yet. So if they don't want to concede here, that kind of makes sense. And they could also hope for the misclick if they want the win. There's Olivia. Not that we need her in this case. Woof. You do get to hear the woof woof every time. That's fun. There's the Fiend Hunter. Okay. So now we go get Hero of the Dunes. Oh no, we're exiling. <laughs> A lot of pitfalls here, guys. A lot of pitfalls. Hero of the Dunes. Resolve. Fiend Hunter. Resolve. Target hero. Yes. Resolve. Uh, exile another creature. Take action. Now I don't need full control, right? But they still have to check with me every single time. Yep, uh, good game, I know. So there they see that there's the endless loop, right? So they're gonna scoop to the endless loop as opposed to the one that ends with my library, which makes sense. Now, you saw the rope come up. Could I drain them 14 times before the rope expired? I have no timeouts here. Probably not. 
But here's the really toxic part about all of this. If somebody does make you play it out, you can just put stops on their turn and just every turn use like at every phase of the game. This is repeatable at instant speed and it's very hard to disrupt. So you can just every single phase, you can just keep doing it until they're done. Davriel, fake freaking fake magic cards over here. Do we keep a hand that duresses fatal pushes and might tutor if we draw a black source? Um, this hand is very sus. And the Olivia isn't great to have in the hand either, and there's no way to filter the draw, but I guess we could go get like Fable or something if we draw black. Okay. Although, uh, I mean, Davriel's such a pain. But they're normally over there doing their own thing, so this could be a pretty good game to just get the combo and win. We do have to draw the lands. That's a land. <laughs> Other Davriel, Grim Tutor, Languish. Oof, 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 oof. I think I actually take their Grim Tutor. They're about to burglar wrap me? Gross. So their Grim Tutor fetching some kind of graveyard piece of hate might just be more than we can overcome. So we'll just uh, do it this way. Olivia can be in the graveyard. This has to come down now. Do we go get the altar? If we get the altar, they probably don't have a way to remove it because they're mono black. And then we just have to hit land drops till we win. <clears throat> it makes flooding out good. I was hoping that they'd ramp there. It is harder to hit your land drops when you're discarding. Ooh, that's a good draw. But if we play it... Oh, we play it. We play it. And then we discard the mind spike. But they have one other discard effect. We lose the altar, which is so bad for us. Okay, okay, okay. So we hold Mind Spike because we actually want to discard it. Weird. There's often a lot of discard stuff in the Davriel deck. So if they have a second discard effect here to go with the Rogue Shadow Mage, it's very bad. Empty your mind. I mean, if they don't have their land drops and they just play a Celestis here, I'm good with that. No! Okay, Hero of the Dunes can get this back. Uh, we can also win by other reanimation tactics. Stitcher Supplier, huh? I do not want to discard this Breach the Multiverse either. Pass. Yeah, they were... So I think the opponent was just smart. I think they were just like, that's an altar of dementia. Like, they they know the combo. Otherwise, that play is pretty weird when you could be ramping. Down to six life. No big deal. Could breach the multiverse right here, but we go to three. Thoughtsies? Oh my goodness. All right. Um, yeah, it's this one. Decline, though. I've got my reasons. It also works on attack, remember? We want our life-linking creature here. See if they can do something about the big life linkies. Tapped Hive. Invoke Despair would have been so devastating. I've played too much standard. Okay, Obliterator. That's not so bad. I'm, okay, what am I talking about? That's pretty bad. Um, How do we deal with it? 
So if I hit this thing for six, I have to sacrifice six permanents. That's terrible. What was I talking about? But we do get a reanimation. Let's see what we can throw in the bin with the supplier. I'm also trying to think of like what I can get with the tutor. Miyuk Massacre is the thing that like I'm the most normally fetching. Let's see. Maybe there's something in here that does the job for a Phyrexian Obliterator right now. Uh, Elspeth conquers death. We don't have the mana. Oh, this is not great. This is not great at all. We can't engage and we're at what? Five? Ugh. I guess Fable gives us permanence to sack. Meat hook doesn't help. I guess it's gotta be the reunion. This lets us get more permanence on the battlefield. We also get to sacrifice our black market connections. Okay, mill something good. Grizzle brand would be perfect. Emra cool. Oh, do we, I mean, we do this. We do this. We already attacked though. This gives us the most permanence to sack. All right, well, we have to exile first. I always forget. I'm not used to that with reanimation effects. So now we have one, two, three, four, five things to sack. Whoa! Block the three, two. I guess that's great. Yeah, sure. Uh, resolve. You, you, reunion or the blood token? Reunion. And we gain the six life. And now there's a hoarding broodlord in the graveyard. All right, all right, all right, all right. Maybe next turn, reach the multiverse. Olivia getting back Emrakul. Smash. The big plan. Blast zone. We've got a Professor Onyx down there. This is creatures or planeswalkers. How exciting! They have a hive. They could attack with a hive, but I gained so much life. I don't think they want that. No blocks. We go to six. It's Davriel's time. What are they gonna do with it? Uh, well, clearly I'm the only one who dressed up for the occasion. Offers and conditions. I was going to say the plus could be a huge problem because it makes us, uh, whenever we attack them, we have to discard a card or sacrifice an attacking creature. Might not even have the attacking, the uh, card to discard. Two random creature cards from graveyard to hand. Okay. Emblem. Their stuff gets minus one, minus zero. Oh, okay. They're going to try to make me discard. Dude. <laughs> They've got their theme and they're sticking to it. All right. We have to tap a land now. No, they're going to get rid of all of it. I mean, if they're losing onto the board, is that even good? Okay. Goblin engineer. If that doesn't have summoning sickness. Let me read my cards when it attacks. If yeah, so returning it with the attack trigger is bad. This can get the altar of dementia. We're going to get the Hoarding Broodlord, and it's going to remove something. That's the theory. Remember, we only get the Emrakul trigger if we cast Emrakul, not if we return Emrakul. It's important. Very important distinction. At 19, we are going to bring back Hoarding Broodlord. We are going to get what? Some removal spell. And then we're going to play the Goblin Engineer. It can get back Altar next turn. That can be game. Choose five. Rah! Hero of the Dunes can get the altar now. Is that game? Maybe. Maybe. 
I always forget Hero can get the altar. All right, ropey, 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 ropey. Let's see what we can do. No more favors from me. Has convoke. I declined the trigger. The fuck did I just do? Whoa, did I just curse? Don't worry about it. I add. I was feeling so confident. I was so confident. Now my commander's stuck in the graveyard. What have I done? What have I done? <sighs> Languish much? Blood on the snow with one snow mana. Destroy all. Okay. Uh, so let's not mill them. And yay, and the escape card we needed. I was like, if we get priest, we can do it all next turn. All right. Could also just get Grizzle Brand. <laughs> <laughs> we don't have a lot of life for Grizzled Brand, do we? All right, sacrifice hero last. That's what we learned before. Haha! <laughs> you blew up your own obliterator. All right, this time will be different. How do I set my stops? Full control. There we go. Uh, this time will be fine. Why is it that these videos, like the big to do is whether or not I just righteously screw up. Honestly, though, I should get Olivia and get the Blood Artist, right? Uh, actually, I should just get Olivia and get Grizzlebrand. Yeah, we shouldn't combo here because we won't have time. We actually can't end the game this way. This is why we have the Olivia plan. Now if we sack this and then get it back, no, it doesn't continue. Like we can recon can we reconvene this and just get more stuff? No, because then this isn't coming back. So yeah, we have to do it this way. Where's Grizz? So we could also punch him for 13, but this is probably right in this situation. And then I guess we won't draw seven right this second. Oh, wait. Sloppy, I know this this deck is hard and I, this is only my second game with it. And it's all like theory up here until you play the darn games. You know what I mean? You guys get the luxury and I mean the luxury of watching some YouTubers like really fight to figure this stuff out and then just hand it to you like it's easy. Languish. We draw seven. Because this is a demon and it's going to get exiled if we don't control a vampire. Whee! 
casual seven. Ah, oh, swords to plowshares. That also helps. All right, we sacrifice Grizzled Brand first because we don't want it exiled. What are we on? 36? Okay. Olivia. All right, we have the combo. It's right here in front of us. And there's the Fiend Hunter, so we can go off. But is going off the answer? It's nice to have a meat hook or something like that. I think we're better off just attacking them and killing them. I mean, at this point, we're going to win it, right? What can we recommission? Stitcher Supplier, Engineer, Lauren Crucius. There are 10. How do I get like one more point of damage? Oh yeah, it has a counter. What am I so worried about? Swift foot boots, swing. No combo necessary, but it was right there. Did I have fun? In an embarrassing, totally, absolutely nonsensical way. Yes, always, it's magic. We go first, we've got the throne of death, which is nice to see, we're against Quintius, Quint, Quint, Quintorius, Quintorius, uh, lore master. So another graveyard kind of deck. Here's to see all that it does. Let's start with the throne. Only getting some turn one micro value off their scry. Okay, it's a good land. Uh, let's go ahead and loot. Edict, Infernal Grasp. Both seem like they'll be good against this opponent. Emrakul, though, might be cheap very quickly. And keeping lands is really important. Hmm, I think I'll get rid of the Edict and the Recommission. Although, if we hit the Altar, this card is a great security blanket to have in the hand but I think it's got to go. Red, black, white. What do we need? Just get a black. The boots. You want your commander to live? You need swift foot boots. I guess we bring it back. I've got a land that's going to be tapped here. Thoughtseize is cool. Man, do we need these lands. And Mercole stays at 10. Yeah, I'm already like kind of lining this up. I think it should be an Emrakul game. No creatures in that yard, though, yet for the throne. On a discarded approach of the second sun. Now this I would like to discard. Can I swap these? Key to the archive. Okay, okay. Problems. Maybe I shouldn't have recast the looting. I just figured I'd draw into something to discard. Now I would draw it right after the looting. Ooh! Hi. Hi. What do you do? We can play our commander, but now we have no creatures in the yard. It's a bit of a... Bit of a nothing, huh? Here is Commanda. Here are Boots. There goes Commander. Wah, wah, wah. 
Hero of the Dunes. Let's go. Got anything down there? Nothing. You afraid? Okay, they are afraid. They electrolyzed it. Wait. Oh, they got it off the uh, key to the archive. I was going to be like, how do you get that in your deck? It's cheating. All right, eight. We have seven. Just got to draw it. That was the land we needed. Okay, this is fine. The fuel will be there. Just wait for it. Opponent might be happy to see all this mill with their commander. This will probably be the turn where they redeploy, though. So you might be like, but the Fiend Hunter's on the bottom of your deck. It's not. We shuffled. The Fable Passage ensured that that was going to happen when we kept it. All right, they make their spirit. Here we go. They make two spirits because Annoying Procession's a card. And Emrakul is seven. Perfect. This looks like a fun deck to control. Uh, there's, it's probably going to be really hard to figure out exactly what to do with them here. Oh my goodness. Look at all this nonsense. And what can we do here? We can cast Ugin for free. Okay. That sounds fun. I want to do it. Of course, it could just be exiled. Three, five, huh? Anyone who harms my people, uh, yes. Will I return to the command zone? Decline. You I will decline this. Ah, good choice. Good, good choice. And now, Ugin. No more anointed procession. Attack. I block. All right. Cool. Orb you. Your commander is lost to exile. <laughs> I'm the worst. Of course, this could be your new backup commander, right? Why not? Five mana two fours are the rage. Yep. All right. Quintorius. What you gonna do about the 13? Looks like they're gonna try to dig for answers. Feels like the ox is coming out. We've got a Grizzlebrand and a Broodlord down there. Oh yeah, they get to make spirits whenever they do that. I always forget what that card does. Stuff leaves graveyard, I make spirit. Ha ha. I mean, yeah, they built a board, didn't they? All right, what ends up in the graveyard? Lots of things. 
Is the meat hook still down there? Yeah. No clever way to get that back. Could get out the brood lord. We get the brood lord, what happens? Could just get Grizzlebrand. What are we at? 15. We have Emrakul on the field. That's pretty good, too. That's pretty good, too. If they kill the Grizzlebrand, they still have another big old lifelinker to deal with. Any other ways to give haste? Not right now. Oh, wait. Boots. That's pretty good. Base. And we could tutor. I think it's Grizz. Hi. Oh, they take it all. Wow. I expected them to kill my Croxa. Let's see. Can they win the game next turn? Like, they've got a lot of spirits. Can they win here? I do have a lot of lifelink. But their deck seems to have some, uh, it's got some oomph. It's got some real oomph. Like that. Fiery Emancipation, triple. I mean, is that gonna be good enough? That's insane, right? What an insane draw. Uh-huh. I think that's enough. Let's see. Block the biggest hitters. And it's like that. Yeah, that's way too much. <laughs> nice fiery emancipation, dude. Oh, God. <laughs> Vorinclax! We keep boots, boots hand. Also, uh, I mean, is this a search for hook? Maybe. What do you got? Well, nothing there that I can take for ramp. I'll just take these boots. Hopefully it's not elves. Little elves. We have no card advantage source and we're on the play. That's scary. We might not hit the land drops we need to. Roping on a turn one elf, huh, opponent? What a jackass. All right, here comes the boots. And a nasty troll. Fiend Hunter, it's interesting. I really wanna boat the bird, but too dangerous. Let's wait, maybe we'll have a land for this Fiend Hunter. Let's get rid of this troll. Good hand for them so far, isn't it? But they pass. Okay, uh, let's get snow-covered planes. Because we need to keep hitting land drops. It has to be untapped, so it's this. No elf. Must keep you hot Vorin collects, although now you have Bankbuster, so I know you'll get there. <laughs> All right, I have Bank Buster. Maybe I'll get there. Land. Cool, and it is tapped. And we need another land, and we got it. Okay. So we don't have enough cards in Graveyard yet to make Crocs and Kunaros great, but we can play Shieldred. 
Children can keep foreign clucks from just beating us. Oh, they hit a tapped land. Like the only one in the deck. That's crazy. Oh my God. So lucky for us. Um, they probably can't just do anything if I just play Croxacuneros, huh? It's a hard one to kill. It's asking a lot. There's the draw. Drop him to 22. Four cards in graveyard. Got to fill the graveyard a little more, but big lifelinky vigilante punchies is pretty good. There's Vorinclex. The party is really kicking up into high gear now. The opponent, you know about Immortal Sun. We know about Portal to Phyrexia. Esper Sentinel, huh? Not that good. But this is pretty good. So putting the boots on shoulder is fun and all, but I don't think it's the way. I think we want to do this. I mean, we're just we're just throwing hands with the big green deck here. That's all we're doing. And goes with the tapped land. I I guess they can still foreign clicks off the castle. And that's what they're gonna do. Sometimes that's all you can do. But Fiend Hunter takes this one. I guess not necessarily. They do have the Bank Buster. Bank Buster might buy them another turn here. Four cards in their graveyard. Still four cards in my graveyard. Yep, here's the crew up. Uh, take that action. Let's see if they take their Vorinclex back or not. Because I can boots on the hunter. If the opponent blocks here. Okay. So now. I go here. Attack all. If they block here or here, they go to one, which is too dangerous. And they do have three things to sacrifice to the portal. Not only that, it will fill the graveyard so the Crocs of Kunaros activation is live. Whoa, okay. That's fine. The portal thing still doesn't help them completely because we can crew our bank buster. Do they know that? Or are they just hoping we don't see it because it's their only play? Now they're still short of mana actually for portal. That's a good card. What's the target? Doesn't save you from Shieldred though. And that's the target, Shieldred. Let's see if we can draw perfect here. Malika Rebirth would be epic. Fatal push, okay. Oh, we could have just killed the Bank Buster. We could have had lethal last turn. I didn't expect that we'd have be able to draw a fatal push, but. Okay, and they die. No fog. Opening hand has altar keep. Our opponent has Sigarda. You and humans have hexproof. Could be a problem. Could be a problem. What do we need? Black? <laughs> Wrong. Wrong. Um, really good card though. No. No, 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 no. Actual black mana necessary. <laughs> Invasion of Gobicon. Could disrupt their hand pretty early on, but we can also ramp. On the play, I think we ramp. On the draw, we probably disrupt. Also, it's green-white, so... 
I'm not afraid of them like I, I don't know if, how, what that changes exactly because they can't hold up counter spells or anything all right let's see if we can turn this into a black source all ramping up okay got there play this tapped I mean we can crocs and kunaros next turn but we don't have the altar down so we probably want to play invasion and then probably altar Woven Wall Mysteries, what'd it do? Never a non-token creature you control dies. Investigate. Okay. Invasion. Let's get, yeah, look at this hand. And no real disruption here, except maybe you could count Thalia. The Sun Gold Sentinel hits the graveyard, but there's no way to get rid of the altar right now. Sun Gold Sentinels here. If we find another man, if we had another black, maybe or a lot more black actually, we could tutor for the meat hook and set up the combo to be a kill. As it is, we can end the combo with Olivia Grizzlebrand. That is pretty close to a win, especially when we flip this. So let's go. There's Olivia. Gotta keep Olivia. All right, let's see how long it takes us to get Grizz set up here as well. Continue. Also depends on how much the opponent wants to see, right? And they might hold on for the misclick. Plenty of people do. Also, they might not know the combo. Plenty of people still don't. But they will soon! Because I'm making the video. Emra cool. I'm gonna call pretty good, but not quite it. Remember, you don't get that trigger from Emrakul unless you cast it. So, it, it's a flashy one, and sometimes Olivia Emrakul wins the game. <gasps> Balls. I totally did that on purpose because, you see, there's the Grizzle Brand, and I totally knew that. Oh wait, choose five. God, you just lose your concentration for a second and it gets you. All right, Olivia, resolve. You here. Here. Transform the battle. Draw. I just want to hit my land drop. <laughs> Look at all the lands. One, two, three. Three tap lands into the bin. Your go. Victory. Interesting. Uh, so Light Shield Array says, at the beginning of your end step, put a counter on each creature that attacked this turn. So entering the battlefield attacking doesn't count as you attacked. Weird. We go first, we play Thassa, Blinky Blue. Hard to get your commander to resolve here, but we do have a lot of disruption, a lot of discard, a lot of things that look at their hand. Crucius is a pretty good card. We have plenty of mana. Swiftfoot Boots is a pretty good card as they try to blink you a lot. Ooh, the orb, do we just run out the orb instead of ramping? Serves as a win con too, although an overrated one typically. No, we ramp. We ramp. Mm. 
Mana open for the opponent. If I play the boots, I'll probably counter it. Then maybe we can play the orb, or I can just go for Solemn. If they counter this, good. Mm -hmm. And we got the real McCoy, the counter spell, which means they probably don't have another two mana counter. You gotta play something at some point or they'll have nothing to bounce. They play replicating ring. Olivia, hello. Uh, you go in graveyard, we'll go. Ooh, if we go greater. Oh, there are some big hits on greater. And then we can keep discarding them. <laughs> Say hello to Emmy. If we mill right, we might just cast Emmy. Got their thought monitor, but they don't seem like a much of an artifact deck. Okay, maybe I'm wrong. Baron! Okay. So now the blinky stuff starts to come together. Let's see what our graveyard looks like. We have got Croxa and Kuneros, and we have Olivia. We do not have Altar. We play this and just get Olivia that gets Solemn. That's not bad. I mean, it's just a lot of board presence that they have to figure out how to manage, right? Not to mention we need the land. Emrakul cool, back up to 13, sad. But don't worry, the orb is going to work on it. So how many counter spells did they run? Doesn't look like a ton. And we got you know, the real big one. Might be more of a bouncy deck. We got the River's Rebuke. That feels good. Whoa, Cavalier Gales. That's a scary card. This thing is thick. Real question is going to be how much does Emrakul cost once we get done milling? Tap land, only one open. Is that Grizzlebrand in my graveyard? Hold on. Whenever this attacks, return target creature from your grave. Whenever it attacks, huh? Oh, there's a Broodlord there, too. Could get us the altar. And then do we win? We don't quite win. We don't quite win. If we get the Broodlord, they block the Olivia exile. We want to do this first. Broodlord or Grizzlebrand. They're not going to beat the Grizzlebrand anyway. We could go for the big combo setup, but it'll take forever. And as, like, I guess we're already there, though. I guess this is the best time to race. This is the absolute best time to try to pull off the mill combo because we already have all of the pieces. Oh, I could have had the attacking Grizzlebrand here. LOL. Kind of forgot about the attack trigger on Kunaros as well. That is insane. Opponent goes to four. It would be rude to combo them right now when they're already way behind, right? Oh, well. All right. Oh, wait, we have to get the... How do we discard or cast the hero? I don't see it. I only see three mana. How do I draw? Do I have something that loots? I don't remember. Uh, I guess we can just search, right? And then we go, well, oh wait, let's just draw seven. We'll find a, we'll find a way. We'll find a... We've, we've got a whole bunch of discard effects in our deck, right? We'll find one. 
Oh, there's the meat hook. And the dark ritual. Come on. Any any moment now. We'll find a way to discard. Thrilling discovery, right? That'll do. If our mana was correct. Somehow I don't have white. Because I'm an idiot. Uh, Culligan's command. Alright, let's go. Dark ritual. Meat hook massacre. Actually, we have lethal. Okay, so what I can do here is uh, an adventure, but we just have lethal, so let's frickin' do it. As long as we don't do anything in the wrong order, actually, and exile instead of sacrifice. So, yeah, the meat hook uh, is gonna kill him as long as we don't sacrifice the Olivia first. Get him! Oh, and we have lightning bolt. Might have forgotten lightning bolt. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. I'm so good at this deck. And Coligan's command. Oh my god. It, yeah, just shoot him in the face. What? What was I thinking? Oh my gosh, this deck is. It's too big brain for me. It really is. Opponent's gonna let this chill on the stack. Okay. Okay. They must have left. Of course my combo wheels are always rusty when we dust them off. You play standard a lot, you don't play a lot of combo. That's uh, really kind of a modern, um, modern sort of format-y thing. I guess Pioneer has Lotus Field as well. So there are decks where you play combo. And I, I'm usually a lot better at Storm than I am at any kind of reanimator loops. This kind of stuff. So I'm gonna be nice to myself and I deserve it, you know? I made a lot of videos, even with decks I don't always like or aren't particularly my style. So, you know, I deserve to be nice to myself for making some videos happen. Anyway, Bolt you. Just kidding, you don't get that trigger. Just kidding. <laughs> Bonus like WTF, dude. <laughs> Why didn't you just do that? that Forgot how my cards work. It doesn't look like Lightning Bolt to me. I'm not used to the Archive one. Good old revised Lightning Bolt, guys. Those are the bolts I, I recognize in the wild. Itali, Primal Conqueror. But we have the Mana Tithe. Hopefully, we'll get to use it. These decks usually run a lot of ramp. Not much disruption. Bot sees. Yeah, we, we should definitely start with that. Let's see what's on top of their deck really quick. Guess we could have done this before we even committed to the Thought Seize. Kami. Kami's a frustrating one to go against. They'll hit a lot of land. Um, so their turn to ramp right now is Incubation Druid. The Domri, though, is probably the best ramp card here. A very difficult one to deal with, and it makes it so Itali can't be countered. Editor, remove that! They can't know. Don't let them know. I sneeze sometimes in my darkest hours. Ramp, ramp, ramp. We loot. Interesting. Very interesting. The Grim Tutor can set up the combo. Are we going to manati this turn? I mean, I want to manati the Itali. I'm just not sure that I can. I think we Grim Tutor this turn. No, 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 no. Because we could Dark Ritual Grim Tutor. Um, ooh. So I think it's Slew Thrill gone. Tapped land go. Whoa, that's a draw. All right, does this mean they Itali next turn? It does. 
How do I get rid of Gorklaw for one mana? I can't. Uh, I could Dark Ritual Grim Tutor Heartless Act to kill Glor Gorklaw, though. That's pretty desperate. I could also go get the altar the next turn, play it. But, I mean, we're just falling so far behind. We're just going to get run over, though. Probably use like a D Spark and a Vanishing Verse in this stuff. I, I guess I also have Mana Tithe open. Let's see what the opponent does. Maybe they think I did tutor for the Mana Tithe. Okay, yeah, get him! <laughs> do, do we win the game? We tilt him out of the game. Not yet. Oh man, now we're just hitting land drops with no creature in the yard. So I think we need to loot. Not great, not great, not great. <laughs> okay, okay, enough land. Need some value. They're very close to just doing it again. Seize. Okay. Pretty good. Okay, voice. There's lots in the graveyard, but none of its creatures. Oh, we draw that now? Ugh. Okay, they're gonna evolve the druid and then Itali. Ugh. Oh my god. Okay. Um, if we have this on the field, though, it's possibly like we get to draw. All right, we just go for it. I think. Man, if at any point along that path we had a chance to discard the brood lord, I feel like we were doing it. You know. Okay, there's a go for the throat. We could exile all this stuff to bring back nothing. Decline. But now we can attack and get the exile. And if we can discard the Broodlord, maybe we can win. Let's see what the opponent hits with a tally. Let's see what the big shot can do. No! Are you kidding me? Rigged! Absolutely rigged! Are you joking right now? I submit. I stacked? That 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 is bull. That can't be. That just doesn't happen. On like both of those hits, a way to kill my commander and the combo piece. No black. This is better. And we have the meat hook. We're up against Imor Imadi Celebrant of B Bounty. That has to be a mega ramp deck. Yeah. Mega, mega ramps. White. We have double white. We have double red. We have double black. So when you need more of a color, it's usually black. There are some lines that require a lot of black mana. Ooh, altar already? Let's do it. Put out the boots, too. See if the opponent has the answer. Turn away from Imati. Loud key. Preacher. Okay, well, I bet my duress isn't very good. You need a land. Badly. I think we just get this onto the field? Duress? Oh, they do run, oh, they run a lot of spells. Holy crap. Mind's Desire. What a card. Um, Baral's Expertise, out of there. That can interfere with us. And now it's just simple, draw land. 
Draw an untapped land. Cascade into what? Wolf Willow Haven, a ramp spell. Good. Kill it! Gotta get that off the field so that all these six drops don't cascade. Needed the land, didn't get it. Discard a card. Looks like you have a lot of six drops there. So you actually get to choose. Shark Typhoon, huh? All right. Who's up? It says I only have one timeout. I really need a second one. Oh no, they did it again. They drew the untapped land. That was supposed to be me. Cultivate. Okay, they'll have plenty of mana. I mean, this is it. They are going to go crazy, I predict, next turn with all the cascading stuff that they can do. We need the untapped land. Hoi! Wow, terrible draw. Absolutely terrible. All right, Dark Ritual. Oh, can't even cast that. All right, we lose. I'm ready to take the L. Just didn't get there. That doesn't cascade, but that's the start. Interesting choice, but I guess they know I would have already removed this. If I could. Uh-huh. And they hit what? Sequence? Could be worse. Discover. <laughs> Okay, they tapped out again. Maybe we can still do it if they don't have a Pact of Negation. Okay. Can we do it? And will the opponent make us? Here we go. Decline, 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 decline. Always decline that. The rest you can like hit spacebar for, but it's the main, it's the big reason you can't just jam the spacebar. Uh, did we hit the fiend hunter and the hero? No, we didn't. All right. Actually, wait, are they dead? 13, oh, it's 16? It's really close, right? Just don't pick the Emrakul and I think we can fly over and win. And just call, call it there, right? So this is 16, and then we have Altar. Okay. Yeah, this is the other fast way to do it. So the block creates a meat hook trigger. And that'll be game. We can also use the Altar to sacrifice uh, for the meat hook trigger. Yep. Uh, that's a much quicker way to win with the combo. And we are back for a quick post-game wrap on Croxa and Kunros. The most toxic combo since Paradox Engine. Maybe more toxic. I think that this uh, deck is a very much a work in progress. It will take practice if you are going to go through the trouble of crafting and building the deck. Give it time. It is very hard to play. And I mean, in my opinion... One of the hardest decks to play. I definitely prefer decks with blue and card selection and things like that. Much harder to do in Mardu. So just how and when to draw cards and when to go for the combo and what to take with your thoughtsies. All these decisions really add up and it leads to a lot of decision fatigue before you even go for the combo, which means that it ends with a lot of misclicks dirt mid combo, which can be tilting to some players. So I caution you, you need to be patient with this deck. It gets better much better as you go the other huge thing for the deck is knowing when to go for the combo how far to go with it and how to find the other wins and when to just not even try to win with the combo 
Grizzlebrand draw seven is enough. It really is. Like in a lot of matchups, you have to know, respect the life total, respect the situation. But sometimes it's not worth doing the millions of clicks to get the Hero of the Dunes combo to happen, when instead you could Olivia Crimson Bride, Grizzlebrand, gain a bunch of life, draw seven cards, and be way ahead. Also, keep in mind the magic number of 16. If the opponent has no blockers in the air, then Olivia Crimson Bride and Emrakul the Promised End can deal 16 if they're still in your graveyard during the loop. So watch for that because that sudden burst of damage can be the difference between a timeout feels bad and a victory. So those are my big tips for playing the deck and practice a lot. I can't teach you how to play this deck perfectly well with a one hour video, which is probably what you're gonna get for this until new cards are printed in a future set. So uh, go out there and really get in the reps. And thank you for watching this video. I think Crocs and Kuneros is a sweet combo deck and it's awesome that it's out there. I love combo decks, especially for Historic Brawl. I don't think it will get banned, but it does have this toxicity side where it takes forever and sometimes you don't always know how to win outside of doing the really slow combo. So yeah, I, I think it's a good thing to have around, but I think it's going to make some people really mad. Thank you for watching this video. I'll see you in the next one. You're cool.